although the duration is a useful and effective tool in measuring the interest rate changes however it is just an approximation to check the impact of interest rate changes on the bond prices what we need here is to uh, determine convexity of the bond in order to further determine the changes in the bonds yields we know that the the direct proportional relationship between percentage changes in prices and the change in yield may give a straight line graph to reflect this relationship but in real the relationship is not the straight line because it is in fact non linear this means that the line is not uh, not straight but there is some curve in the line now the degree of this curve in relationship between bond prices and the bond yield is termed as the convexity what duration rule is in fact basically it is a good approximation for only small changes in the bonds yield but it does not work for the larger changes the bonds with greater convexity means that more curvature in the price yield relationship on the screen we see in the right panel a graphic relationship between percentage change in bond prices and change in the bonds ytm we see that there is a curved line colored in blue and that curved line shows the percentage price change for a 30 year 8% coupon bond selling at initial ytm of 8% then there is a straight line and that straight line is showing the percentage price changes predicted by the duration rule now the slope of this straight line and that is this straight line the slope of this straight line is the modified duration of this bond at its initial ytm and that modified duration is 11.26 years now we see that for small changes in the bonds ytm the duration rule is quite accurate as we have earlier seen but for larger changes there is progressively more daylight between the two plots that we can see the difference between these two lines here these demonstrate that duration rule becomes progressively less accurate we also see that these two plots that is the blue and black dotted line these two plots are tangent at the initial yield which is zero here in the graph duration approximation always understates the bond's value because this understate estimate increase in the bond price when yield falls and it overestimates the decline in the prices when the yield rises this is due to the curvature of the true price yield relationship and this curves with shapes like that of the price yield relationship are said to be the more convex the curvature of the price yield curve is called the convexity of the bond as we have earlier seen that bond is a curvy and the degree of this curve is termed as the convexity now why investors do like convexity for their bonds because the bonds with greater curvature mean there is gain more price when the yield falls than they lose when yield rise so the degree of gain is much higher than the degree of loss the second reason is that the this convexity tend to have higher prices and or lower yields all else equal but the desire for having convexity is not free uh, because investors will have to pay higher prices and they expect lower ytm on the bonds with more volatility so how to determine the duration and convexity on callable bonds we see on the screen's bottom 
panel at the right side in the graph that at higher rate of 10% the curve is convex and this price yield curve lies above its tangency line whereas at the rate at 5% as it falls from 10% to 5% there is a ceiling on the bonds market price which cannot rise above the call price this means that the price yield curve lies below this tangency line and the curve is now said to have a negative convexity this price yield curve shows unattractive asymmetry the issuer this means that the issuer has retained an option to call back the bond and if rates rise the bond holder loses and if rate fall the rather than reaping a larger capital gain the bond holder may have the bond called back from her by the bond issuer now to determine the duration on such bonds we need to compute effective duration of the bonds with embedded options by effective duration we mean the proportional change in bonds price per unit change in the market rate of interest this means that effective duration is the relationship between the uh, changes in price and the changes in interest rate this particular equation is different from the modified duration model in the sense that it does not compute effective duration relative to change in the bonds own ytm or yield to maturity second the effective duration formula relies on the pricing model that accounts for embedded option and that pricing we see in the equation in terms of changes in price that is the delta p over p so how to determine now the convexity of mortgage backed securities or mbs uh, how these mortgage backed securities work let's talk on first in in this case the lenders originating mortgage loans commonly sell these bonds sell these securities to the other financial agencies the original borrowers continue to make pre uh, repayments to the lenders the lender pass these payments along the loans to the buyer agencies then the agencies combine many mortgages into pool called a mortgage backed security and that mortgage backed security is then sold in the fixed income market by the buyer the borrower has the right to prepay the loan at any time these mbs or the mortgage backed securities are subject to same negative convexity as the other callable bonds in fact when rates fall and the borrowers prepay their mortgages the repayment of the principal is passed through to the investors now rather than enjoying the capital gain on their investment these investors simply receive the outstanding principal balance on the loan the value of the mbs as a function of interest rate is somewhat different because this value of mbs as a function of interest rate is much like the plot for our callable bonds that we have just seen in the graph of the callable bonds earlier it implicit call price or the principal balance on the loan is not a firm ceiling on its value and that we have seen earlier in the case of callable bonds here a term is used as trenches what these trenches are these are underlying mortgage pools divided into a set of derivative securities these trenches are made to allocate interest rate risk to the investors who most willing to bear that particular risk